you know, people take risks. The problem is that that gentleman who works for me is always smoking on the clock. He steps outside with me to help me do something while he's on the job, but he somehow thinks that his addiction to the e-cigarettes, the vegetable oils, the whatever it is he smokes, is okay to do while he's outside with me. I haven't exactly told him that that's okay by me, and I don't think the company would be pleased to see him doing that. It is absolute truth that the leathers in these particular chairs that he sits in to smoke and the boxes that are sitting outside in the fresh air can pick up any type of cigarette smoke. And then those boxes go home with people. Now the advantage of them being outside is that they're going to pick up the mildew, the moisture, everything that's going on, even the rain mo moisture and mildew will get into those boxes. That can cre create mildew and mold over the course of time. Now what we know about most people is that they'll take the box home, they'll take the chair apart, they'll assemble it, and they'll throw the box out. Only a handful of people will actually keep a box that's something like that for something like that to go in, especially if they think at some point they'll move again. And that's the truth. But what we have to understand is where our boundaries in this world begin and end. And our boundaries are not about what we think our boundaries are. Our boundaries are bound by the context and the principles of the job responsibilities and the job duties of a job description. And a job description defines the barriers and the actual da daily duties of a person on the job. If the individual is actually doing their duties all the time, then perhaps there's some flexibility for someone who smokes. But my question is then, what are the benefits to someone who doesn't? Do they get to go outside and sit down in a chair and take a breath of fresh air or make a phone call while they're on the job? At what point do our slippery sliding slope of what is and isn't okay because someone has an addiction makes a difference? Today, I was actually visibly present when a young man was seated on the sidewalk, really focused on trying to put his life back together. And when he's sitting there, one of these employees from one of the other establishments along this strip walks by, presumably with his alleged mother, and literally says something to the gentleman, calls him by his street name, his nickname, and literally says, I'm just as poor as you. The mother behind him was mortified, embarrassed by what the young man in his 30s or maybe closer to 40s said to the homeless man on the street. And I have to tell you, I was sort of offended myself. I thought how inappropriate for that man who works for the other company to take his private time to presume something about the homeless man. My guess is they know nothing about him. My also guess is that we are a very caring corporation that says we're going to help people in business to move themselves forward when they go through a downturn in the economy because COVID has caused all kinds of loss of businesses. COVID has called all kinds of loss of jobs and COVID has lost a lot of employees over the course of time. It is my understanding that one of the most beautiful women at one of the local uh, spots here on the block has gone missing, literally MIA on the job. So we have to ask a couple questions. Is that individual missing because of something that has happened in her life that she's overwhelmed by, like the loss of a loved one, a loss of a parent, a loss of something that just says, so what about this little hourly job? I have a family issue that I've got to take care of and I can't get time off to do it and they won't be understanding if I want to? Or is she just overwhelmed by the fact that often she is left completely alone in her service to a very busy company? And that is bad for business. It's not about not having good employees. It's about not having the right employees impacting the right employees. Everybody wants to work nights, apparently. Really? I don't think so. I've not seen an overwhelmingness of people working nights, but I also know that a gracious and kind manager who does do hiring is not going to take a misfit from another company on the block. If they got fired or let go from their job on the block, then they're not going to be a good fit for a company. So these are things that we learn by associating at the same level of management with other managers on the block. We can compare stories, we can share information, we can talk about challenges with specific troublemaking employees, we can talk about how to handle situations, we can share our general managerial knowledge, and we can learn some things. But what we cannot do as a business practice is we cannot share information that is disparaging on someone that we know absolutely truly nothing about without having done something immoral or illegal. Immoral behavior is putting your hands on someone in the night while they're sleeping. 
Illegal behavior is putting your hands in their pocket, taking their wallet out, looking at their IDs, putting things in their wallet that don't belong there, taking things out of their property bags, going onto their resumes, going onto their channels on our Wi-Fi. That is immoral and illegal, both at the same time. Not to mention illicit, if we want to go into some alliteration here of just really getting you to get this. When I'm a manager, I'm responsible for my shop. When you're a manager, you are totally responsible for staffing your shop. If you're having problems in your staffing, the first place you have to look is not you exactly as a manager, but you are responsible and liable for that. You must look to the other employees. What are they doing? What are they saying? How are they behaving on the job? And if you don't know, then you need to have secret shoppers. You need to have regular customers. You need to have other people who can communicate to you what is and isn't appropriate going on. What I've seen at night is they're understaffed, and there's some supervisor somewhere, allegedly leaving one person as cashier with horrendously long lines, overworking them, and then people don't show up on time, that's a behavioral problem that can be fixed immediately. Absolutely fixed immediately. But if you take a really good worker and overwork them to the point that they can't even have dinner, that's your problem. That is a fundamental problem of a manager and poor staffing a place. You see, it's also a problem if you're keeping the loser employees because they show up all the time. That doesn't help your company. What you want to do is hire the target demographic that fits your company. And a targeted person is right for you, but if you've got targeted people that are doing illegal things or immoral things while they're on the job or after hours through your Wi-Fi systems, you've got a real problem.